Welcome to KMET 1490 AM ABC News Radio and the Southern California Business Report, a show dedicated to highlighting successful Southern California businesses and the people behind them with Daryl McCants and Yvette Walker. And now here's Daryl and Yvette. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Southern California Business Report, where we focus on successful Southern California businesses and the people behind them. With Yvette Walker and myself, Daryl McCants, we are really excited today. We uh, talk about focusing on successful businesses from awe-inspiring sole proprietorships to world-renowned organizations. Well, today we have the absolute example of all examples of an awe-inspiring sole proprietorship. We have, uh, first of all, how are you, Yvette? I'm well, Daryl. How are you? Can you hear me? Um, I can hear you. I can. I can. I can hear you. Great. And uh, we have. We are focused today on Moonshine Lamp Company, another uh, shining example in Southern California, and the founder and lighting guru, Rob Lubell. Rob, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. So, Rob, uh, if you would, if you could give us a little background on uh, your prior to founding the Moonshine Lamp Company, so we can kind of give the audience a little taste of your background and how uh, you got yourself ready for this endeavor, and then we'll jump right into what exactly Moonshine Lamp Company is and uh, what products you're manufacturing right here in Southern California, and, uh, and I'm really excited about it. I've been looking forward to this. I've been talking to Yvette. I said, you know, this is really the example of an awe-inspiring sole proprietor. So if you could share with everybody your background, Rob, prior to founding Moonshine Lamp Company, give us a little background. Well, it all started a bunch of years ago when I entered the film industry here in Southern California. And uh, one of my first big movies uh, was Pulp Fiction. And on the first day of shooting, I was a pretty green lighting technician, and I was handed a briefcase and a bunch of batteries and some weird lights, and I was told to put it all together so that when you open the briefcase, the thing would light up. <laughs> and uh, hey, hey, we hey, hand... Hey, hey, Ro- hey, Rob, do me a favor. Just back away from the microphone just a bit. Okay. Is that better? That's, that's better. That? Okay, so you say you... Okay, go right here. I'm sorry to interrupt. Keep going. No problem. So, yeah, so a... Uh, uh, they handed me all this weird stuff. We didn't know necessarily what it was for. And um, it turns out we, we handed it to Sam Jackson, and he brought it into the diner with John Travolta, and they opened it up, and this beam of light came out, and the rest was history. Uh, but I spent the next 20 years in the movie business doing all kinds of crazy things. And uh, one answer you never give anyone in the movie industry is the word no. So if someone asks you if you can do something, uh, you say yes whether you can or not. And then you figure it out later. So after oh, that, that, 20 years. That's hilarious. Yeah, so after 20 it. years that, of doing that's that. That's Richard Branson's philosophy, right? Say yes, you it. can do it. Figure out how to do it later. I like it. <laughs> that's it. That's the way you always had to do it and be creative. Um, you know, you, when you're working on television commercials, you have 30 seconds to make uh, a point. And in movies, you know, people are a captive audience in a chair watching a movie. They have nothing else but their mind to jump in and experience this uh, emotional ride through a story. So every visual cue has to be perfect. It has to be right on. It has to sell it. So that's what I learned to do and watching the set designers and all the creative people making things and doing things all for the cinema was, was what taught me everything that I've applied to my current business. And the one thing that I didn't like were the hours. And after 20 years of doing it and, coming home super late at night and losing weekends and losing sleep, I just said, I just can't roll with this anymore. So I, I took what I learned and I opened up my own lighting company, uh, adding a theatrical element to custom lighting design. Very, and very you, nice. Now, you can now, see a lot of that countries? in the designs. Yeah, that's what I try and do because, uh, you know, ultimately the only thing anyone needs in their house is a light bulb uh, to see with. That's it. Everything else is fun and fanfare. So if you can make it fun and cool and add some decor and design and a good feel to someone's home or their restaurant or their bar or their hotel, then uh, you win. 
It, it, absolutely. Now, how many, before we get in the Moonshine Lamp Company, which uh, I'm excited to jump right into it, uh, how many different countries did you travel to while you were trying to figure out lighting and, and the entertainment industry and helping them solve their lighting problems? Uh, we went to, um, uh, I, I did a stint in Taiwan on a movie and uh, went up to Canada, uh, but mainly stayed in the United States during that time period. I've actually sold more lamps to people in other countries than I actually went to, but it's been, uh, it's been a fun ride. There was a lot to see while I was doing it, and so I've taken that and applied it to what I'm doing now. The, the reason I ask is oftentimes when you leave the country, you really have to learn how to improvise. You may or may not have everything you need, as, as we are so blessed to be here in, the, in, in Southern California as it is. Oh, that was the case when we were in Taiwan uh, working on a movie. I lived there for eight months, and uh, boy, that was a lesson right there in uh, how to acquire things. Uh, the way you can in Southern California, um, it, it's just a different, it's a different culture. It's a different way of communicating and uh, just a different way of processing information. So when you'd need things, you'd have to go down to certain areas and certain districts to find all kinds of parts and pieces to do all the lighting, um, the lighting design and then lighting repair of prop pieces and things like that. So it, it was, it was really fun actually working in that country and, so much of what we have here in this country comes from that country. So there, there was actually a huge amount of things at our fingertips. And we had so much fun discovering all these things that you would see out here that would also cost a lot of money that were just crazy cheap out there. So that was a really cool experience, too. And then learning how to, how to, how to, yeah, how to, how to improvise and pull things together with uh, shoestring and, and duct tape. <laughs> now, 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 speaking of starting from scratch, I've had a front row seat event with Moonshine Lamp Company. Uh, Rob Lubell, the founder and lighting guru, uh, has allowed me from day one to get a little glimpse into his operation. And it has just been motivational to see somebody take something from literally zero and start to build concepts and take them to market and, and carefully work with there's clients uh, from somebody walking in to buy a gift to major projects in, in the lobbies of some beautiful hotels and restaurants and working the whole gamut. And, and the amount of patience that, that, that I've seen Rob um, put out there for his clients has just been amazing. I'm just uh, it, it's really uh, when we use the term for the show, awe inspiring, you know, this is definitely Rob Lubell at Moonshine Land Company. Rob, would you tell the audience a little bit about when you started the company and what it looked like day one? And uh, and if you want, you know, you can talk a little more about what you left behind and 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 the whole mindset of jumping in to build something from ground zero. And uh, then we'll kind of take it from there and kind of move forward right to where we're at now. Well, uh, leaving the movie industry wasn't just something I was prepared to do and then just drop off a cliff into outer space. There was a, a plan to move from one career to the next, and the second career was opening a retail store that catered to local makers and artists, and we found that location in Claremont, um, Southern California. Um, so w what the goal was was to open this store, uh, allow lots of local artists and uh, local makers in Southern California to have a place where they could sell their wares and to easily make connection with customers and to, and to provide a place that was approachable um, and to uh, foster a sense of community amongst the artists because a lot of them are intimidated to go out there and, and try and sell their wares to people. Uh, but there are a lot of people that are really interested in buying things uh, that are handmade and locally made. So that was what we did. We started with the store. And uh, we filled it up very quickly once the word got out. Uh, we met a lot of people in Claremont, had a great time with it. We really got into the community. And my being a, a maker, um, uh, I, I went ahead and decided to throw something in the store. I, I, I saw that someone had taken a bottle, and they cut the bottom off, and they stuck a light socket in it and hung it up with a light bulb, and there it was. I was fascinated with it. So I said, I think well, I, I could do that. Rob, it's, it's easy to see how 
incredibly successful your company Moonshine has been now. Um, in hearing about your background in the film industry speaks to that. Uh, knowing that you have that sensitivity of using light to set a tone, to create an atmosphere, a feeling, you know, a sensation that I'm sure a lot of your consumers want to create within their own spaces. And attention to those cinematic details and dramatic um, designs that you have are just beautifully married together in, in your products. And the way I would describe them when I was reviewing your website is, you know, the range is so beautiful. So I saw some pieces that were completely raw, um, extremely rustic, um, you know, a nod to the Industrial Revolution, to beautifully refined, you know, repeating clean lines that remind me of Art Deco. So mm. what is your process for creating the designs um, that, you, that you create? Is it more um, internal or is it external from what your clients are looking for? Actually, a lot of my products come from suggestions from customers. So they'll see something um, and then they'll say, I love what you did here, but can you do something like this? And some artists would be offended by that. But I figured, well, you know, that's, that's all part of the fun to me is making it a communal effort, and the customers just love that. They love participating okay. in the process, and that's, that's part of what has made my company successful. So there is a fair amount of, of things that um, I've made based on suggestions from my clients. And then there are other times where I'm just out somewhere and I'm in a space, and uh, it's a, a lot of times bars and restaurants are very inspirational, especially if you go to places in downtown L.A. where some of the interiors and the decor are just outrageous or in some places in Las Vegas where they add these crazy design elements to some of the interiors that just blow you away. And I just take sometimes just a piece of that and then I run with it and then I, I morph it into something else. Cause honestly, everything's been done and ideas are shared and conglomerated and morphed into other things all the time. Absolutely. So, and you know, we need to thank Thomas Edison for, you know, giving us all the opportunity to enjoy light and for you to use it creatively. And, you know, I learned this little interesting bit, and that was that we almost lost Th Thomas Edison in 1866. He actually had intended to leave the U.S. or Brazil, but his plan was stopped when a riot in New Orleans prevented him from boarding the steamship. So hmm. I'm very thankful for the day that he decided to stay in America and I guess in some way thankful that he didn't board the steamship. But, yes, Brazil would have had him and likely the light bulb as well. Wow. I never heard that story. That's a great story. <laughs> that, 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 that could have had a profound effect on it Rob could have. and, and Moonshine, and Moonshine. Land Company. <laughs> it could have. Okay, so just, just, just because we have a, a big reach, there's two Claremonts. There's a beautiful Claremont in San Diego, and there's a beautiful Claremont in L.A. County. And uh, Rob Lubell is speaking about his original uh, shop in Claremont in L.A. County. And uh, so I wanted to give a shout out uh, to the uh, L.A. County group. And, uh, and, and Rob is also manufactured in San Bernardino County. So, so of the top, the big five, uh, he's already been in two. And uh, so tell us exactly when you started, Rob, and, uh, and what your original pieces were. And uh, we're going to slowly kind of move from there to where we're at now. And, and again, anybody just started listening in. We got Rob Lubell, the founder of Moonshine Lamp Company and lighting. He's the founder and lighting guru. So go with that, Rob. Well, uh, as I said, it was the retail store uh, heirloom that's in Claremont that we open to uh, cater to the local artists. So uh, my contribution to the store was the one bottle that I cut. And uh, that, that was a, that, that's a story in itself. I'm just cutting the one bottle and finding out how to do that. That was an entire weekend. So finally we figured that out and I took the bottle and I hung it up in the store and uh, someone, uh, someone purchased it. And that alone was a kick in the pants. I mean, I actually made something, and someone went ahead and bought it. Are, are you hearing something, uh, a glitch? 
online? Is everything good? Can you still hear me? Yeah. Yeah, you're good. You're okay. good. Okay, good. I just heard a glitch in my ear. So, um, so I, uh, you know, that that's part of the entrepreneurial spirit is is making something and selling it is is pretty awesome. I had never experienced that before. Uh, I had been a, a payroll guy my whole life. You know, you, you show up, you have certain responsibilities that are tasked to you, and you perform them well, and you get invited back. And that's great to be appreciated that way. That's what we all want, to be appreciated. Um, but I just wanted something more. I wanted, I wanted to create something entirely on my own. And so selling that one bottle and uh, realizing that potential was just, it was super exciting to, to experience that. And then um, my fiance said, you should put these online. I said, what are you, kidding me? No one's going to buy this yard art. They're not going <laughs> to buy cut bottles and bulbs in them. She's like, ah, you'd be surprised. And I, I said, what, like with labels on them, with the alcohol bottles and the labels? And she said, absolutely. You know, there are a lot of people who have home bars and their favorite liquors, and they think it's fun. So I poo-pooed it first, but then I tried it, and I stuck them online. And it took a while. They sat there for a few months, actually, uh, online with not, no action. And, and then finally, uh, a guy in a restaurant, an Italian restaurant in Toledo, Ohio, called me and said, I need 12 fixtures for me to put over the tables in my restaurant. I hung up the wow. phone, and I called my lady, and I just lost my mind. I said, you're not even going to believe what just happened. And that was like the first big sale and it was a, a, a tremendous turning point for me that this could be real and this could turn into something. And then I just kept pushing on those opportunities um, and, and then just growing the business organically from that point. And, and now your thousands of bottles cut later and fixtures <laughs> coming out your ears. And, and, uh, and now, what, now what year was that first, um, that first manufacturing assignment completed? 2012. Wow. Wow. Eight years ago. It won't, it, it won't, it won't be long and you'll be on a 10 year celebration. It's true. Now, before, before we go any further, uh, Rob, your, why don't you go ahead and give us your, uh, your best contact information for those interested in going on your website, making contact. What is the, uh, the best, uh, best contact source for you? Well, you can go to moonshinelamp.com and find everything you need there. If you want to take it further, you can uh, email rob at moonshinelamp.com. And that will, uh, that will oh, that, get you pretty much everywhere you need to go. That's like the world's easiest <laughs> website, moonshinelamp.com. Very that's good, what, very good. That was my aim. I love it, I love it. Okay, so... So let's let's kind of break it into two categories, and we'll uh, we'll start out with what products, right off the shelf, when people go to your website and uh, they're uh, they're able to be fulfilled pretty quickly. I know you're making everything by hand. Give us a little feel for some of those items that uh, that fly off the shelf. What kind of a time frame is needed? Uh, and then uh, we'll kind of meander over into the customer uh, custom orders momentarily. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, the, the most popular thing or anything with pulley wheels, uh, that industrial age, a modern industrial application is, is really popular right now. So anything with um, uh, alcohol bottles where you take the labels off where they don't really look like they're bottles at first, until people kind of study it and say, hey, wait a minute, those are not just glass shades. Those are actually bottles. And then we hang those from pulley wheels and a few different formations, and those are still the, the best sellers, you know, whether it's a wall sconce with a pulley wheel and some bottles or a pendant lamp. Um, and then we do a cascade of bottles from wheels, and they, they're just eternally popular, and those are our biggest sellers by far. And what, uh, what kind of turnaround is typically... Uh, it's about the smaller fixtures, two to three weeks, and the bigger fixtures, three to four weeks. Of course, right now, you know, there's a lot of stress on supply chains and delivery uh, companies. So, you know, it, we're looking for the big fixtures. It's, it's literally about four weeks right now. And people seem okay with that because most people that call us are building a house. And, 
they're calling well ahead of the time where they will need the fixtures and they're preparing things. And we usually get some pretty good advanced communication. Once in a while, there are a few people who were going down the rabbit hole and we're going to purchase lights from some other vendors. And then through continued search, uh, stumbled upon us at the 11th hour. And then they're, they got really excited and say, oh, well, we need these by next week. And sometimes we can rush it through if I'm in a good mood. Other times I say, I just can't do it. Okay. I think we just lost your sound a little bit. Go ahead and uh, say that last part again, Rob. If, if sometimes, if, if someone found me, you know, at the 11th hour after they've been looking for lamps for their, their new build, their new bar, their new house, um, you know, it just depends upon whether or not we can squeeze them in, but sometimes we can do it and, uh, and burn the midnight oil and, and rush an order out to, you know, cause I run a business and I want to keep orders coming in. Yep. No, That's no, great, no. Rob. I had, um, I had a question regarding the difference between, um, locals, let's say that are building a new house and want your input and feedback for a specific design versus those that are maybe on the other side of the world that want the same, you know, the same application, something special for their home. How do you work with um, both scenarios? I actually work very little with locals. Believe it or not, majority of my business is online. And, um, uh, you know, I work a lot with photographs, photographs from uh, either sketches from their architects or maybe they're, they're already kind of down that road where the house is framed in and drywalled and now they're putting final touches in and flooring and stuff like that and they can still give me pictures. And other times they don't need anything. They just know what they want and they'll just give me a description of the room and, and then give me their own measurements. And some people are very, very precise but, and they like something that um, – that's already in my catalog and they just want me to adjust it a little bit. And then other people are totally from scratch. So it, it varies a lot, but uh, the process isn't any different. Uh, you know, needing to come to someone's house to, to see something, it can, it can mostly be done in a photograph, you know, or, or some words in an email. It works fine most of the time. So how does the, the mood and, you know, for lack of better terms, in terms of, you know, the watts of the light bulbs or, or the way they're positioned, how does that play into the conversation when a client is looking to set a certain mood or look or feeling in a particular space? Well, generally speaking, uh, there, there's only, <clears throat> you know, these days everything's on a dimmer. So you can just dim it down and you're good to go. So really what they want is, uh, the question is, if I dim it all the way up, is it going to be bright enough? Because this particular room is going to be a dining room, and we want it super bright if necessary to clean up and or, or to do uh, – it's a family environment, and they want to be able to do schoolwork at the same table and have it bright, or they want to read the paper um, you know, after dinner, and they want it bright, but they still want to be able to dim it down. <clears throat> they just take it from there with dimmers. And these days, too, there are so many different kinds of light bulbs out there. The LED world – is, is everything right now, and they're making vintage style bulbs, and um, that, that's kind of how it how it goes from there. I, I think they are concerned more about uh, the design of the fixture overall, the look of it, and then uh, the quality and quantity of light uh, just kind of falls into place after that. Very nice, very nice. Well, we're going to be going to a break here shortly. Uh, Rob Lubell, founder of Moonshine Lamp Company, and Yvette Walker. Um, when we get back, it'd be great if we could uh, move into some of the products specifically and dig deep in, into some of the custom work. I think Yvette just kind of set the stage by asking, you know, some of the different uh, options as far as uh, the actual light source. And you answered that real quick with the world famous uh, light dimmer response. I didn't see that one coming. That was classic. <laughs> well, I can't wait yeah. to ask about the wall sconces because I know that wall sconces are everything, especially for women who are applying their makeup on it, you know, on a mm. daily basis. Yeah. And I got to tell you, his, his workshop is enough to make uh, anybody jealous. And he's uh, about to head up to Washington State for a big installation. Hopefully we have time to talk about that. But uh, it is uh, many feet long and many feet tall and many feet wide and just... Uh, it's just really, really over the top. So once again, uh, we'll be back here momentarily. And 
we will be talking more to Rob Lubell with Moonshine Lamp Company, the founder. And Rob, before we go out, give the uh, website one more time. Moonshinelamp.com. KMET 1490 AM with you everywhere you go by downloading our free smartphone apps found on the KMET website, KMET1490AM.com. You can also go to the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store on your phone to download the free app. Now you can listen live or play any of your favorite programmers' podcasts using your smartphone. Don't miss out on the free KMET smartphone apps. Go to KMET1490AM.com and download your free phone app today. Your Pharmacy and Mobility Solutions now has Pack Your Meds. That's right, just add water. You order five or more prescriptions from Your Pharmacy and Mobility Solutions, and they will pack your meds for you in AMPM Mark Packs. No more sitting down and counting and dropping them on the floor. You remember, it's not fun. I didn't like it. So now, they'll do it for you. Safe, sealed, and dated. So call Your Pharmacy and Mobility Solutions at 951-845-8252. Hello, listeners. This is Christopher from The Christopher Show. Hey, if you miss one of our shows here at KMET, don't worry about it. You can go to our webpage, and that's KMET1490AM.com. Go to the homepage, click on the SoundCloud tab, and hear any show anytime you want. Join Daryl McCants and Yvette Walker every Tuesday at 3 p.m. on ABC News Radio, KMET 1490 AM, and on the Internet at KMET TV for the Southern California Business Report. The show is dedicated to highlighting successful businesses and the individuals behind them. Daryl and Yvette interview the incredible people managing these enterprises that range from awe-inspiring sole proprietors to world-renowned organizations. The Southern California Business Report, Tuesdays at 3 p.m. on KMET AM and on the Internet at KMET TV. Welcome back to the Southern California Business Report with Yvette Walker and Daryl McCants. And today we're really thrilled to have Rob Lubell, founder, lighting guru with Moonshine Lamp Company. And he's spoiling us, taking us behind the scenes, uh, discussing his truly awe-inspiring sole proprietorship that he built on his own uh, from day one. And uh, we're eight years later, and he is uh, really, really uh, busy and taking time out today. I'm sure has his stress level up, but uh, we're going to continue to peel the onion and see what uh, what else is going on over at Moonshine Lamp Company. And Yvette, you were about to ask him about a product that caught your eye. Go right ahead. Well, first of all, I just think it's the neatest thing that your first experience in the lighting industry was basically to be given a box of wires and lights on the set of Pulp Fiction and told, here, now make something with it. And talk about hit the ground running and creating an iconic, you know, uh, scene for that movie. I'm just still blown away by that. Excuse me, Rob. Um, but speaking of also the entertainment industry, I'm sure, as I do, appreciate wall sconces. Um, I didn't realize this up until a few years ago, but wall sconces add so much perspective that is more uh, appealing and uh, a better reflection of who we are when we're trying to get ourselves ready in the morning or, you know, make ourselves look the best as we're preparing for the day. So mm -hmm. what, what is the popularity of the wall sconces that you create for your customers? They're hugely popular, and oddly enough, when I first started making bottle lamps, all I did was cut the bottom off a bottle and stick a cord through it with a socket and hang it up, and all I sold were single pendants. That was it. And then people would constantly email me and say, can you do a sconce? 
I didn't even know how to do a sconce. I didn't know how to begin trying to figure out how to make one. Um, I wasn't a metal fabricator. Uh, so I was really in a quandary until finally I just said, well, if people are asking me to do this, why can't I do this? I mean, this is my business. Um, I should be pushing forward and expanding my inventory and learning how to do things here instead of being a stubborn mule. Like Henry Ford said, black's the best color of any car you could buy. That's, that's what you get is black. <laughs> and, uh, you know, everybody knows that's not the deal anymore. So um, started making the sconces, and, uh, yeah, they're hugely popular. I didn't, I, you know, you just don't go into very many modern houses where people have sconces, uh, or not modern, I guess, um, you know, over the last 10, 15 years, an average priced home. They just don't put sconces, over, you know, around the houses. It usually that's like an, an, older, an older house, uh, like old craftsman houses, mission-style houses. They have lots of sconces and beautiful glass and, um, or like super high end modern homes will do sconces, but kind of somewhere in the middle, they just don't really do that because they build the houses inexpensively. They throw up the drywall. They put a box in the ceiling for a, a ceiling fan or a light fixture and they call it a day. That's sort of a mid, mid range house, but, um, it's been really fun dealing with people who want sconces was, we'll add a piece of pipe on the outside of the wall that goes all the way down to the ground with a plug. And you can put it, you know, next to your bed stand, uh, your nightstand by your bed, or on tables on your side of the couch. You can do that, and that adds a, a really great dynamic to the room. But for um, for wall vanities and bathrooms, yeah, they're they're important, and uh, a lot of people don't really consider that. They pick the one light that I have, where they say, "Oh, that looks cool," and I say, "You know what? That's going to be too dark for you. You're not going to want to put makeup on with that thing." So you right. can either blast it with a higher light bulb. Or you just need a more dynamic fixture that's pretty and still has a lot of light. So when it comes to a vanity light, which would be task lighting, there is a, lot, a consideration of form and function. So right. it's important to keep that in, in, in mind, definitely. Well, that, that's great to know. And I'm telling you, I recently discovered sconces, and I'm uh, regretting the fact that it took me this long to, to learn about them, but there's definitely a, a different dynamic in the lighting and it's far more flattering. I think people back in the day um, got it a little bit more, but I love that you also, um, you know, evolved and added that into some of the products that you offer your clients. Yep. It was important to do. And uh, so, so they're, they're a huge part of my inventory now. So I sell a lot of them. That's great. So we've talked about pendants. We've talked about wall sconces. Now, for boring people like me, what about the good old fashioned standing lamp? Is that still uh, is that still a favorite, or or am I out of date? You might be a little out of date. Um, they're 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 good. Uh, they're good to have. You can move them around anywhere you want. Um, they're not very common commonly requested. Uh, they're, they're cool okay. looking for sure, but they're probably for someone who wants to decorate their, their house in a very specific style. That's kind of old school, like craftsman house, then it would be a really neat thing to put in there. But uh, I think for modern homes, just, a, a a floor lamp, um, they aren't just, they just aren't that common anymore. The tour shares. Very. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm so used to yours having ropes and pulleys and the most amazing you know they're just so much fun to look at and the light is is uh you know is the feature you've really figured out a way of making these uh these fixtures just the highlight of the room Let, let's kind of look now let's start to move over towards the custom because what we've talked about so far people can go on your website at moonshinelamp.com they could look at these options put an order in and they can be delivered in you know, as you said, they can be uh, they can be uh, manufactured and shipped in a very uh, you know very quickly. Now let's talk about custom. So uh, you've shared with me you know some of the uh, A list people that have ordered custom stuff. In fact, one of them uh, uh, is a household name, and his his employees bought him a couple of beautiful sconces. Uh, since you mentioned sconces, Yvette. And uh, I don't know if you can mention those names or not, but uh, but on the custom, I, I remember the, he built a custom box, and these were put in the custom. It was the most amazing thing. It looked like a treasure chest 
Yeah. So this was such a beautiful presentation. You know, when you think of a, a special event or you really want to make a big splash, you know, Rob just pays attention to every detail, not just the fixture, but as he ships it, you know, every little detail is uh, is focused on. What, what have been some of your, your most fun, most challenging, uh, you've had the most uh, feedback on in terms of the custom work that you've done? Um, one of the most challenging jobs was doing a hotel in Miami. They wanted this copper pipe to hang from the ceiling, three inch pipe that would wind its way all around the ceiling about a foot down. So it looked like you were in the underbelly of a, a boiler room and, uh, the hotel was called the generator. And then they wanted bottles wrapped around like 90 bottles in this bar wrapped around this water pipe, and um, it was quite the deal. We sat on the phone for about six months talking about this with the construction company, the design company, the architect, the intermediary company that helped to oversee construction. Um, then we had to get approval from the code enforcement um, and, and uh, the, uh, the building inspectors for how the whole structure was going to be built. It was hugely challenging. Then I had to ship everything out to Miami and then fly out there to receive the box. And we put it up over five very, very long, intense days. And it, it was a lot of fun. It was rewarding at the end, but it was pretty intense. So that now, was now, one. Now how, how many light fixtures were on that project? There were 90, light, 90 lamps hanging from the ceiling. Wow. We had to put each wow. one up one at a time. So it was it was very involved. And, and then we've had some, uh, some big chandeliers in uh, various parts of the country that we would go to people's houses and put them up in their homes um, because they were big structures that needed to be put up. Some of those were a little bit more simple. They were just simply uh, uh, an expanded version of the process, but simple to make. So those, were, those weren't that um, demanding. I mean, they were just time-consuming. And then we have one coming up where you mentioned earlier we're going to Washington, and that's going to be another very demanding one that's going to be very unique. Tell us about that a little bit. Well, this is a, a town in Washington called Leavenworth. And if you're from Southern California, you've probably been to Solvang, which is a, a Danish village. Um, Leavenworth is very yep. similar to that, but it's a Bavarian-themed village. So they're building a custom home in that town, and they have this big dormer window above the door with a giant, uh, uh, a giant window on the front of the house, and then this big opening that goes up like 25 feet above the kitchen table. And uh, they said, we want an epic chandelier. I said, okay, well, that's a tall order. Uh, I wonder what that means. So I had to fly up there to look at the house. They wanted me to come up and see it. <clears throat> so... I flew up there, and I'm taking a look at the whole thing, and I thought, well, this is a Bavarian village, and what's what's a Bavarian village is known for? They're known for their cuckoo clocks. So I said, well, do you want to make a cuckoo clock a light fixture? And they kind of looked at me and scratched their head a little bit, and they said, what do you mean? And I said, well, what if we, what if we built a superstructure of gears and levers and arms and crazy mechanical things? None of them will move, but... It will just be a decor piece that is up in this dormer window. So when you look up into the tower, you're looking into a clock tower. And then in the front of the window, when you're looking at it, it tells time with giant clock hands. And then while you're sitting at the kitchen table, there's giant weights that come all the way down at the level of the table that have your lights all around them. And then it's this incorporated fixture. And I thought, they're either going to put me on the next plane home or they're <laughs> going to... Or they're going to love it, and I, I'm guessing or, that they loved it. <laughs> well, the husband and wife are huge sci-fi uh, book fans. He is a huge Star Trek fan. She loves Lord of the Rings. Uh, they both have read all those books, and they just lost their minds over the idea. And I said, all right, cool. Oh. So Yeah, that, I got, that is so Leavenworth. You know, we visited Leavenworth not too long ago, and it's just a beautiful charming historic um you know the architecture so your idea is just beyond it's so perfect and so beautiful and oh my gosh you have to share that image with us when you complete it it'll be on my website for everyone to see hopefully i'll get some good pictures sometimes it's hard to photograph things but 
Um, I usually, I usually get some pretty good shots, um, you know, when it's all said and done, but, um, you know, give, us, the, then, give us an idea of the dimensions. How big, how big is this? Uh, well, chandelier? the gears, the gears are 32 inches around in diameter and there's about six of them or eight of them. And then there's a whole bunch of smaller gears intertwined with them on these rods that kind of extend across the ceiling six feet. And it's, uh, four feet wide, six feet long, 32 inches in diameter, actually more like 48 inches is what the whole footprint is. And then these giant cables will come down off of these spools because the cuckoo clocks have the weights and that, that spool up. So I made giant spools for the weights and then this giant log down to, over the table because they wanted a, a rough hewn beam that hangs over the table and then from there we had some hardware and pulley wheels and um she gathered a whole bunch of classic vintage glass bottles that she found from various people on ebay and had them sent to me so we've got all this great old uh vintage glass and antique wow. glass bottles that we cut the bottoms off of and polished and they're all funky and scratched and weird and we're going to light them all up with light bulbs and that will hang over the table so it's oh, that is gonna be so cool. Spooky. It's pretty kooky, well, I, but it, it'll be I fun. just want to say something. I'm just going to put this out there, okay? Because listening to the way you describe your work and seeing the detail, the love, the thought that you put into every piece, you heard it here first, but I anticipate that one day we are going to see your lamps or lamp or a variation thereof somewhere in a museum of light. And... Um, you know, your work is, is art, and I love to hear how you describe it because you can hear the, the love and the passion that you put into your work. And for that, I'm so excited to see this new project and excited for this couple that get to have something so unique and beautiful that they can appreciate day after day. Yeah, and It'll you be gotta fun. be careful with Cruise Rob Bell at Moonshine yeah. Lamp Company because he's very humble, uh, he's a, a, a big listener, and he, you're absolutely right, Yvette. He puts his heart and soul into really uh, getting the details and really, you know, capturing what the client wants. But, uh, Rob, uh, would you just share a little bit about some of the training that you had that that, uh, um, that you didn't put in your upfront uh, uh, background? You actually had formal training in, in, the, uh, in the art piece of this. You want to talk to that for just a second? Uh, well, I went to Art Center College of Design, and I studied film and photography, and uh, that's a really intense program in there, and they, they uh, gear you up to basically pursue art, but in a commercial fashion. So everything has to be top-notch. It has to be, you have to defend your your creative sensibilities to the class all the time, and they have critiques, and, um, and everything has to be sellable. Is, is sort of the mission of that school. It's, it's art in the name of commerce. And that was, a, that was a great springboard and a great foundation for me that um, brought me through the movie industry and then um, spit me out the other end into my own business. Uh, and I now, still, tell us, I, now tell us, Rob, that, that's in Los Angeles? It's in Pasadena above the Rose Bowl. Very nice. Great school. And, say, and, say, and, say, and give a shout out to... So, Give me the name of that uh, institution again. Art Center College of Design. And I encourage anybody who wants to pursue uh, a career in the arts is, is in the form of advertising design, illustration, packaging design, and automotive design, and um, uh, commercial photography to uh, investigate that school. If you're, if you're young in high school or in junior high and you're listening to this, uh, that's a school worth uh, paying attention to. Yep. Very nice. It, well, it, Thank you. Any, it, any entrepreneurs out there that want to start something and see it through and, and work really hard to build, you know, I think, uh, you know, Rob's a, an example of, of that model, if there ever was one. Now, Rob, back to Moonshine Lamp Company. If somebody has a special occasion, you know, uh, the birth of a child, wedding, um, uh, celebrating some uh, milestone, uh, anniversary, something work-related, 
Uh, give us some some real life examples where people have come to you and said, "Hey, this this uh, wine bottle or this champagne bottle or whatever," and, uh, and and kind of walk us through that. We're we just went over a gigantic project that's you know insane. I can't wait to see pictures of it. That's very large scale. Now let's bring us right back down to something that people listening right now could get excited about. Say, so, you know what? I, Absolutely, I've got something over here that this this uh, this uh, wine bottle or champagne bottle or whatever uh, whatever spirit they have or otherwise, you can transform that and make that something very special. You want to talk about that type of uh, custom project? Yeah, that's very common. There are a lot of people who want to send me their own bottles for a number of reasons. Either for uh, they they uh, it was one of the bottles of champagne they opened up on their wedding day. There's definitely been that. Um, there's someone's favorite whiskey, uh, and someone wanted to give a gift to someone for Father's Day uh, and use uh, their dad's favorite whiskey bottle. There are people who, um, there's a woman who went on a cruise to Italy and bought uh, two bottles of very expensive wine after she had uh, tasted them at a, at a winery in Italy and then sent the bottles to me. Um, we cut the bottoms off, made these beautiful wall sconces for her wine cellar, and one of them broke on the way back to our house. Oh. <clears throat> So I had to scramble and um, find a replacement bottle. So I went to my local uh, wine dealer here in Claremont, uh, the Packing House Wine Merchants, uh, Sal over there, uh, who's helped me out a lot over the years, said, um, he said, well, maybe I can get you one of these. We'll have to see Um, because I'm not very familiar with this bottle. And I'm thinking, oh, man, you're a wine dealer and you're not familiar with that bottle. That is not a good sign. So uh, he finally found it from his distributor, and it was over $100 to buy the, the bottle. So I had to suck that up and make that purchase. And I told my fiance, I said, hey, let's have something great for dinner tonight because we're having a $100 bottle of wine. There you go. There's always something to celebrate. <laughs> there <it> is. <laughs> so that was, uh, the, that was a crazy one. And, and most common is pennant lights with someone's favorite uh, bottle of uh, wine or spirits. Is that kind of the the number one? And then wall sconces is uh, is is right up there as well. Are those kind sconces of the two are actually main... popular for a custom bottle because generally people that are really excited about using a very special wine are wine collectors because they're that into it. And then a lot of times they actually have a wine room or wine cellar in their house. So the ceilings tend to be low. So most commonly sconces are requested for custom bottles. Nice. So that's kind of the way that that all kind of works out. Or a very, very low slung chandelier that's very small that can be hung over the corner table down in their wine cellar with three of their favorite bottles of wine hanging from it. Very nice. Wow. Looking ahead, Rob, what would you consider to be, you know, a dream project as if the one in Leavenworth doesn't sound like a dream project already? Um, You know, if you could uh, just conceive what in your mind, what would be the the dream project for Moonshine Lamp Company and Rob? Well, I think... um... At this point, uh, just uh, 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 probably something that would be in a place where it would be viewed by a lot of people. A, a commercial application in like a, the center atrium of an office building or a big grand hotel, that would be a kick in the pants to build something like that. Um, so maybe, maybe that will come one day. Uh, maybe I'll get a call from someone who's building a hotel in another country and wants me to come out there. That would be fun. But right now... What uh, the the passion of the people that appreciate my work is really what is what excites me the most. Like this thing in Leavenworth that I'm going to be doing, or people that want me to come to their homes and do something special that will last them a lifetime, is is really what's most exciting to me about the process. So I don't necessarily know if um, if I'm I'm counting on one particular dream job as as much as I'm excited about the continual process of meeting people and um and getting a a lot better at my craft as 
more jobs demand more things, uh, you know, necessary for me to develop the processes in woodworking and glassworking and metalworking. I love it. When I saw your work, I instantly could see it in a beautiful casino, you know, somewhere in Las Vegas. They have those grand, opulent, you know, lobbies that set the tone for the experience of those that are there to enjoy their time in Vegas. And when I see your artwork and using the lighting that you use, um, to me, that sounds like a natural fit. In addition to that, you know, I was thinking Radio City Music Hall. How about the Pantages Theater or Dorothy Chandler Pavilion? You know, I've been to all of those yep. places and the lighting is not very remarkable, but if they were to incorporate your artwork, I mean, that could just, in my view, enhance experience tenfold. It would be a lot of fun to be involved in something like that. Um, so maybe one day I'll, I'll get a call. But uh, for right now, majority of my customers are consumers uh, and buying things for their homes, and I'm having a great time with that. I love it. And I'm, I'm going to have to uh, talk to you about some projects before you get too busy because um, – your, your work is just remarkable, and we need something like that in our home, and that's for sure. Well, we get to support a, a Southern California business. You get a piece of art. You have lighting, which you can use every day. That's right. And as a, and a, and as a bonus, as a bonus, if you decide to you know, send Rob your favorite bottle, you have to empty it first. Okay? <laughs> Absolutely. So that, I, mean, I mean, so... You know, so I mean, what what more can he do for his customers than allow them to participate in uh, in, in, in 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 enjoying that uh, that spirit before off to Moonshine Lamp Company it goes, but uh, but but we're winding down. Uh, Rob, uh, Yvette, just uh, I just can't thank you enough for coming on and and sharing with our audience the uh, the product line. The backstory, you know, people I think will have a much better understanding of, of what it is you're doing, how you're doing it. Um, you know, everything is made right there in your shop. It it it, it reminds me of uh, going up to the North Pole. You know, he's got some customers that have even said, "Wow, they've flown down to his shop, and it's a million bits and pieces and and, and parts. It's just wonderful." So, Rob, thank awesome. you very much. And uh, we are we are just about out of time. Thank you so much for joining us on the Southern California Business Report, where we celebrate the best and most successful businesses in Southern California and uh, the awe-inspiring sole proprietors to world-renowned organizations. And you're representing the sole proprietors this week, Rob. Yes, and, and don't uh, forget, you can find us on Facebook and YouTube. So come, check out our page, give us a like. Take a look at these videos on YouTube and stay posted for upcoming speakers. Yep. This has been the Southern California Business Report with Daryl McCants and Yvette Walker on KMET 1490 AM ABC News Radio a show dedicated to highlighting successful Southern California businesses and the people behind them. Log on to the show's website and remember to visit the podcast page.